Welcome to this living room tour of the colorful, delightful works of the modernist masters. We began with Him by Francis Poulenc, and with its gallant, fanfarish like atmosphere, I thought it was an appropriate overture to this exploration of the early 20th century. Just imagine being Poulenc and living in Paris in the 1920s when this piece was written, and the explosion of cultural influences that would have been happening all around. Other composers, such as Darius Mio, traveled outside of France for inspiration. He took a trip to Brazil and was captivated by the music he heard there, particularly its rhythmic vitality. And so he combined these Brazilian rhythms with some of his own techniques, such as bitonality. That's where you may have one hand in one key, but the other hand in a different key. And this produced a set of fun, quirky piano pieces, each one named after a neighborhood in Rio de Janeiro. And so I would like to play three of those for you. Corcovage, Sumar and Yarangeras. Thank you. 
While some composers enjoyed traveling across the oceans, others were interested in traveling across time. In 1950, Dmitry Shostakovich composed a set of pieces, you might say an homage to J.S. Bach, because it is written in exactly the same format as Bach's well-tempered clavier. 24 preludes and fugues, one for every possible key signature, major and minor, in the Western tonal system. And I will play for you Shostakovich's surprisingly serene fugue in C major. When I think of the piano music of Sergei Prokofiev, what might first come to mind would be the massive and glorious piano concertos. However, he did write piano music at a smaller scale. In fact, you might say at a miniature scale. And he would play these little pieces at social gatherings with his friends. Uh, he would also sometimes play them as encores following his performances. But at a party with friends once, he played these uh, short pieces, and uh, there was a Russian poet, Konstantin Balmont, who was present, and he was inspired to write a poem on the spot about these little pieces. And one of the lines was, in every fleeting vision, I see worlds filled with the fickle play of rainbows. 
Now, another friend at the party was native to France, and they translated that little phrase, fleeting visions, into French, vision fugitive. And so that became then the name of this set of delightful short pieces. And I'll play five of them for you today.
Olivier Messiaen was a colorful composer in many ways. He actually experienced what scientists call synesthesia. In other words, he had an interlinking between two different senses so that when he heard sound, he actually saw colors. And so in this piece, the second to the last of his preludes from the year 1929, he describes this plein calm or this quiet plaint. He describes it in colors. He says it is smooth gray with reflections of mauve and green. We have heard the music of modernist composers who were influenced by their culture, their travels, their times, all of their senses. And now to conclude, we will discover what happens when a genius such as Igor Stravinsky is influenced by American culture. This is his joyously clangorous ragtime.